All right, so welcome back to the channel. My name's Kevin. I'm Tarsha. This is Conversations with the Crawlies. We do conversations about faith, family relationships, and fragrance reviews, too. <laughs> so if this is content that you enjoy, you know what to do by now. Hit that subscribe. Hit the like. Request notifications. And share. We'll see you in the comments. Consider becoming a member. Checking out the merch store as well. So this is our anniversary weekend. Yes. So we today's were like, our today's our anniversary. Like today, today when we're filming this. Yes. So we're getting this out the way so y'all can go ahead and watch this. And then we're getting on to some anniversary shenanigans. <laughs> All right. But this is Never Ever Met's episode five, I think it is. Yes. Right. And so one of the things also you all know, if you've been on at least this season for Never mm -hmm. Ever Met's, we also are doing scent of the show mm -hmm. which, because I've gotten into fragrance collecting. Yeah, so, really quickly. Really quickly. <laughs> It's growing, and there's more to come. But this one was that I'm wearing today. This is Mercedes Benz Select. This was a actually it was a blind buy that was happened by accident because there was there was another Mercedes Benz one that was on my list that this wasn't it. Right, that's your anniversary gift. This is my anniversary gift, so I'm definitely wearing it. So I thought that was the one on the list, and then you tell me that wasn't the one on the list, but it works. It worked out really good. It's got nice. Uh, bergamot, which is one of my favorite notes. Mm -hmm. um, you picked up on, it's got like a little mint leaf note in there too, which yeah. is good. Um, if you are a fan, because I I, I'm a, I I realize that sometimes the scents that we wear, sometimes they are reminders that have some of the same DNA of other things. So if you've ever heard of Creed Aventus, this is a not bad um, not scent. Bad. It, I mean, it's a good scent, <laughs> but it's in that same DNA right. of Creed Aventus. So this is a good one. Yeah. And we don't wear cologne and perfume like that anymore because back in the day when I was younger when an older man would come in and I mean older I'm like a 10 and a 20 or 30 year old man would come in mm -hmm. you would smell them immediately yeah. back in the day and nowadays you well, it depends upon where you are. Right. That's, that's probably Depends true. upon where you are. That's probably upon. true. And then what's your scent for the day? Okay. Mine is the Burberry Brent Sheer. Mm -hmm. Now, I like it. This is one that you picked for me, which was a very good scent. Yes. I like floral, mm -hmm. so that's one of my main things. And fruity, yes. so I do like fruity floral scents. Yes. And it's still light, though. Yes. So, which I appreciate. So, it doesn't come on strong, mm -hmm. so it kind of just lingers throughout the day. So, mm -hmm. if, you, if you're a fruity floral kind of lady, this would be perfect. And it's not, it's not, it's pretty reasonable. I don't mm -hmm. say it's very yeah. expensive. Yeah. And this is a nice size bottle. Yes. So. Yeah, both of these are pretty easy wear, so that's our fragrance let us know if you guys want us to maybe do fuller reviews or if you have other things that maybe you're interested in that maybe we see or how maybe, we think about it yeah or maybe you want to dive in and have a uh, a perfume because you want to get you know the right attention coming right. your way <laughs> right because these are both i would consider like daytime Kind of just hanging out, yeah. easy, what I call easy yeah. reach. All right. We need to get away from the bath and body that lasts, uh, I give it 30 seconds. Yes. And get into sense that's going to that will last gonna permeate that throughout garage, the day. All that fun stuff. Mm -hmm. All right. But y'all also came because y'all saw the thing about Never Ever Met. So <laughs> we're going to talk about that. We didn't get paid for no Not yet. <laughs> but there is a link in there if you want to make your purchase for Father's Day or for just because. Mm -hmm. There's a link down in the description there. All right. So let's talk about the Never Ever Mets because that's what y'all are here for as well. Um, let's kind of, well, somebody got kicked off the show. <laughs> they didn't really get kicked off. But they were like, you don't have to live here. <laughs> Your time's up. So you need to go ahead and move on. You, you, <laughs> I don't know where you're going to live, but you ain't going to be living here no more. Y'all ain't y'all ain't feeling each other? Good. Y'all ain't going to be feeling them sheets on your backside okay. overnight. You better get out of my cereal box. <laughs> Matter of fact, I'm just going to say the cereal containers are huge in the house. Yes. <laughs> they went to the to the, the box Costco. store, to Costco and, and the box. BJ's Warehouse okay. Club. But yes, Brandon and Sienna got sent home. They were like, y'all are not having a relationship. That's not what the, the show is out. not. The, the never ever met friends. homeboys, homegirl. <laughs> right. So she does say that she, at least she feels a weight off of her shoulders because she knows how he felt. You caused that though. Well, but she was being honest. She was. You know, she's like, 
maybe there was a back and forth because he was trying. He was. He was trying. But I'm glad he made it clear. Yes. Because you don't want to go through like, oh, you just pretending to stay on the show. Right. So I am glad he's just like, nah, I can't do this. I refuse to be in this stress. Mm -hmm. And so she felt relieved, which is good. Yeah. You don't want anyone pretending with you. Not at all. Mm -mm. So... They're, they're gone. They yeah. flew back to New York and Florida. I, I guess. believe so. But he also says that he's willing to try online dating again. Yes. But he won't wait that long to see the person. Because I think they were, what, 10 months? They were 10 months. Yes. Yeah. So, so. Makes sense. What? Well, yeah. I think you can know someone crazy in the 90 days and then enough to meet in a, yes. a comfortable location. If you're going to get flewed out, get flewed out to a... <laughs> A, a place where it's public people around. Yes. Don't get flued mm. out to some cabin in the woods <laughs> <laughs> and find out. Mm -mm. Somebody basement talking about nah. we had Airbnb out in the middle mm -mm. of Washington. No. Nah. Yeah. Get flued out to a downtown hotel. Yeah. So. And near some family where you, you know, someone else, right? Because they still could be putting on, you know, airs with you. Mm -hmm. But if you're around, like, at least a friend in a different city and they can be like, yeah, nah. Yes. So. So you all know that we also do this kind of couple by couple. We don't give a play by play of everything that happened mm -hmm. in the show as it happened. We kind of focus on the couples because I think that's the important piece, at least for us. Yeah. So the takeaway is the couples, right? Yeah. So as far as couples that were kind of background in this episode, Josh and Shay yeah. were there um, during the whole rope thing. Um, Josh tied Shay up. And had to be told a couple of times, hey, that, you, you can go ahead down. and tie her. Go it's, ahead, it's okay. <laughs> go put the feather down. Put the feather down. So right now, they're still moving well. Um, yeah, they're doing they well. They don't seem to have any issues that we can see or have been put out yet, right? Right. Because, you know, maybe they're just trying to hold back. Because, yeah. again, we know that editing is not, and they can't. Right. There's six couples. They can't, can't show, show everything. everything 24 7, right? Correct. So they yeah. want to capture all the drama they can. You pick out the storylines that work. Correct. Yes. So, but he did say no matter who fighting, he's going to eat them ch chicken nuggets. Yes. So, <laughs> shout out to Josh for not allowing anything Listen. to keep him from eating. Priorities, bro. <laughs> Priorities. Uh, likewise, Millie and Greg, for the most part, were background. Now, yes, we'll talk about Millie's conversation and that whole big blow up that you all know. Mm -hmm. um, Millie, though, if you remember, Millie um, did mention that she was raped in the previous episode. Yeah. She mentioned that. Yeah. And so when it came to the rope bondage thing, she wanted to do the, be the one tying up Greg as that opposed to sense. being tied. And I get it. I, 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 cause I think that's also, we'll talk about it. I think that's also some things for Jody as we learned a little, a little later. Yeah. Well, what's so funny. She's like, he's like, okay, you need to make a decision on who's tying who. She's like me. <laughs> and, and so they were like, woo. And then he goes, you getting tired? And she's like, no, 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 no you no, getting no. tired. Mm -mm, mm -mm, mm -mm. <laughs> Hands behind your back, right? Right, now. right. So he got confused because she was like so quick to answer. Right. He was like, oh, 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 oh I'm getting oh, tired. Okay. I'm getting tired. Gotcha. Okay. <laughs> so. I thought that was cute. Um, So let's, who else is there? So let's talk. You want to do Chris and. Sandia. Sandia. Yeah, let's do Chris and Sandia. Yeah. All right. Um, so. During that whole breakfast fight, which we'll get into a little more detail in a moment, but during that whole Chris, that whole breakfast fight, after it's all over, Chris is like, I just wanted to make you known. I have never said anything bad about Jody. Why? Why do you, <laughs> why do you do I don't understand how you decided to get that route. Because I know that um Aaron, Diamond's Aaron. He comes in, you know, all this grandeur about how he doesn't like Jody, mm -hmm. but he doesn't say he don't like Jody. He he says all the guys, all of us. My thing is, if you really take an accountability of what you say, you only talk about yourself. That's that's what you learn. They say talk about yourself, not everyone else. And so he makes this statement: it's every guy. So here, for whatever reason. Why Chris felt it was necessary to say, y'all know, and start pointing everyone out. I never said anything bad about Jody. She is my favorite person. 
No, he does. Now he does say she's one of my favorite people. Oh, he does say he does one say, of. He does. He says she's one of okay, my favorite people. Okay, I didn't hear that. Only the favorite part came out loud for right, me. Right, right. Okay, the favorite one part spoke loud. Right. Okay. Okay. So Millie was like, "Why you got to make that clear? Right? Ain't nobody really asked, or why? Why you got to make that clear?" Millie got upset about that. So Millie was like, "Look, I just want everybody to be real in here." And she's like, "Is she your favorite?" <laughs> Millie's, like, Millie's like, "Look, I ain't gonna say too much." But you're saying something that not really is not really navigating her really well. So, is she your favorite? <laughs> Just be real. So. Oh my god. Yeah. So here we are. You know, now we just see Sandia by herself. She's trying to figure out what is going on. Well, no. First, he and Sandia are talking, right? I, I thought he he comes around the corner. She's sitting there by herself. Okay. Okay. Right? That's right. That's right. And then she walks. He walks around the corner and sits mm-hmm. beside her. Mm-hmm. And that's when he's like, "Hey, you good? Are we good? Yes. Is yes. everybody good?" Mm-hmm. You know, she's like, "Well, that was a lot. Everybody's yelling. I'm hearing all these different sides." Right. And then he's trying to, I'm assuming, console her. But it seemed like it's all about making sure she ain't mad at him. <laughs> right. Because she does say she's non-confrontational, right? Mm-hmm. She's like, and and I I think part of what we're seeing is she's very not laid back. I think she's very quiet or she's very reserved. She's, she's very reserved. That's she's the word. Reserved. Yes, she's very reserved as far as what we can see. Mm-hmm. Right now, we don't know. Aaron might jump in the comments and let us know that she was really loud and and, and boastful at the in the house. But what we're seeing is that she's very reserved. Mm-hmm. Right, um, she's very much an introvert as far as what we can say. Yeah, you know, she's just probably like taking her time. Mm-hmm. Again, my understanding, they haven't been in the house very long. Maybe a week by now? A little over a week because when they do talk about um, at the, the rope thing, she says, y'all entered the house last week. So it's been about a week it's at about this a week. point, right? So I'll be still trying to figure out people but how now, crazy you are. Oh, yeah. Like, are y'all going to jump off? We are in the kitchen. There is utensils in here. There's, there's knives, knives, there's pots, there's pans. Don't somebody could get Al Greenish and, okay. and get some, some, some grits, grits and throw it. Mm-mm. So I just want to know how I need to be moving in this kitchen because all the fights Love that happen and happen. Yes. <laughs> happens in the kitchen. I was like, what's going on? So now one thing Chris said in that moment that I was like, er? he said, yeah, we have people we care about, Aaron and Jody. So it's like, I, you know, you keep saying that there's not anything with you and Jody. I all we can do is say okay, that okay. we take you at your word. But you keep bringing them in. You interject you them. You keep interjecting them mm-hmm. into the conversation. Into, into it. And it's like is it uh, is that the case? Because if I'm not feeling nobody, I, you know, we may be friends, like you know, we've talked about before in some of our previous ones when we met I had some friends who were like sisters to me, mm-hmm. right? But once we were secure, once I knew this was it, it wasn't, oh, so and so we're gonna go hang out with so and so. We go, it was like she knew that there was a relationship with there, but I wasn't gonna keep bringing them into right. any part of a relationship because right. I didn't want you to feel insecure about the relationship or the friendship that I had. Right. And I told you, I didn't feel insecure. Right. You know, I get that. Because yes. I know one of them, at some point, you liked each other and not like each other at it, some yes. point, you know, so I knew that. Mm-hmm. So for, for Chris, again, he keeps telling her not to listen to other people. But he keeps saying it. But he keeps <laughs> putting stuff in her ear. Right. Like, you know, we're good with Aaron and Jody. They, they gonna we're be, good. We're going to be vacation buddies. Right. I'm like, what? So I'm like, and why do you have to keep um, reconfirming that? Right. Confirm your relationship with me. Yes. That, hey, I apologize because again, until we talk about the counseling session, that you know, this keeps coming up, mm-hmm. and it's inter to me, it would interfere with me trying to get to know somebody. Yes, you know, because to me, it's an interruption. Yes. Now, when they go to the um, the rope tying mm-hmm. field trip with Orpheus Black, shut up. That's his name. His, oh, that was, that was his, his name. name. <laughs> it was Orpheus Black. That's why he was dressed like. That. That's why he was looking like Morpheus from the Matrix. <laughs> His I name is Orpheus Black. I thought there was just. <laughs> Be 
Do you remember The Matrix, the movie The Matrix? <laughs> that was Orpheus Black. That's who. That's what's his name. Hilarious. Okay. Morpheus's cousin, right? Cousin. Um, so <laughs> at the the thing, Chris ties up Sandia, right? Mm-hmm. But he was the first like, I'll tie you up. He's like, yeah. Um, but she does say in one of her like producer aside, she says mm-hmm. that there is a connection mm-hmm. and that a lot of it is getting lost in everything else that's going on. Mm-hmm. And so that's why I'm like, you know, we can, we can, again, we're watching. Right. And just like everyone else in the house, they're watching. Now, yes, the people in the house have a, a little more up front, close seat. They're seeing everything. They're seeing it, right? The cameras are there and not there. But if she, in her mind, is saying that there's a connection and everything else is getting overwritten. It's getting overwritten because of everything else going on. At some point, we have to give her the benefit of the doubt that she knows at least what she's comfortable with. Mm-hmm. And if she's not comfortable with, then she's got to be the one to voice that, right? And that's what I'm saying. And you can't just voice it when you want to mm-hmm. or when it's in your benefit. True. Because when... She could have shut it down with Diamond when Diamond approached her, correct? That's true. That is true. She could have said, Diamond, it's good. I got this. I'm navigating this. I'm just meeting Chris. We haven't been dating that long, so we don't Mm -hmm. even know if we're serious yet. Right. So it's good, girl. Don't worry about it. Yes. So she could have approached it in a way that would have helped this. Mm -hmm. She didn't. She's like, she like flammed she fanned the, the flame. flame. Yep. I can't get it out. Yep. You know, and so, okay, yeah, let me see what I can dust, you know, get going here mm-hmm. and mm-hmm. see where he lands. Right. And that's not always a good uh, way to go either. Not at all. Not at all. Um, so they do have a talk with relationship, Dr. Romani. Mm-hmm. Um, long story short, um, she does say that he's not good at dealing with her emotions, mm-hmm. which. He said his eyes get big. I'm so sorry. <laughs> his eyes was huge. He was like. <sighs> She's attacking me with her emotions. Yes. <laughs> I was like, dude, it's okay. Now, here's what I'll say is that in our 28 years of marriage, one of the things that I had to learn was navigating her emotions as well. Navigating mm-hmm. your emotions mm-hmm. and you mine as well, right? Mm-hmm. And, and me s- navigating my own emotions. Yes. <laughs> God, this is yes. just be honest. I, because if I've never had to really share it, right. I'm a, I'm an adult in an adult relationship. Or because of, of, of in our 20s. Par- parental relationships and trauma. Correct. You have to you have to uh uh put, assert yourself. You have to push down your emotions. Correct. You couldn't, you couldn't yeah. lash out the way you want to lash yep. out or say what you want yep. to say. So we're getting married, and yes, figuring out her emotions, right. my emotions, our right. emotions. Right. But the, and so, I get what she's saying, and I get that he he may not recognize that that is going to take work, mm-hmm. but it is going to take work. You right. are going to have to, right. um, uh, one, na- help your your partner navigate their emotions, mm-hmm. but also navigate your response to their emotions. Right. Yeah, because you didn't do well either. No, I didn't. <laughs> I'm, I didn't. We'll come back when you start crying. Yeah, yeah. That's a direct quote. <laughs> it's a direct quote. That's a direct quote. Can't even make up what you're saying. <laughs> when you finish, let me talk. Let me hear. Let me hear what you actually have to say. I can't understand that. I don't get them tongues. <laughs> All right. But we made it. We made it. We made it. We're making We're it. We're making it. We're choosing each other every day. We're choosing each other every day, every hour. Dang, okay. I was just saying every day, but you're like, no, nah, every hour. Every hour, I choose you. Four o'clock might change. All right. <laughs> so anyway. I'm just playing. I'll take a day. But he does say that uh, he is. He recognizes that he's friendly and can be too touching, right? She says that. No, did he say he recognized that? No, no, he didn't say she that. She said that. She yeah. said that. <laughs> and he would basically was like, yeah, he can understand that, but he feels attacked. Because he knows in, in his, his heart mind. and in his mind, because in here, Cause I'm not want, that way. Right, because if I want to hit it, I hit it. Because this is what he tells us. That's, that's basically what he tells what he's boys. Yes. So, so he yeah. says he feels attacked and controlled. Mm-hmm. And then he's like, but it's hard because she got her highly emotional way of bringing it up. <laughs> so the fact that they're meeting with this person, and she does, the doctor does a great job of saying, Here's something that I'm going to prescribe for you. Yeah. It's called empathy. (laughs) 
you need a great big dose of empathy. Yeah. Right? Yeah. And she says, even though if it's not true, Mm -hmm. you're empathizing with her feelings. Right. Not the truth. Correct. Her feelings. And I think hearing it from somebody else, because it was said before, Mm -hmm. but hearing from somebody else, it kind of opened his eyes a little bit and say, okay. I can can take that. Yeah, I can take Mm -hmm. that. And I think the uh, therapist did a good job asking him, like, so what do you feel the challenge is going to be? I think a lot of times, you know, when other people try to help other people out, they say, oh, this is going to be your challenge. Mm -hmm. She asked him, and then he was able to express what he felt the challenge was. You know, same thing with her. And the therapist balanced out well, saying, okay, Mm -hmm. if you want empathy from him, you got to show empathy. You just can't say, well, I'm a different woman, so you should automatically trust me, which I thought was great. Um, So he felt like, again, he's not being attacked because men always feel like they're being attacked, you know? Always? Okay, not always. Majority of the time they feel (laughs) like they're being attacked by women. as men, we either always feel we're being attacked or Mm -hmm. we're being attacked. Mm -hmm. Is that the way to put it? I guess. (laughs) Well, you tell me. I mean, because, again, is I know... You have expressed that you feel that what I'm saying could come off that I'm being critical mm-hmm. or judgmental to you, where in chances I'm trying to help and to, and to be better. And really, it better. just it, it, it sometimes it's the delivery. Sometimes, and I'm not just talking to us in general. Right. I'm talking in specific. I'm talking just in general. Sometimes it is the delivery. Mm-hmm. Sometimes it is the your own personal trauma, if you will, or your own personal experience. And so sometimes if if someone says something that re, that was said previously by someone who maybe did not have the best intention, mm. it can come off as an attack because now I'm reliving that trauma. So this makes sense. Yep. Okay. Um, so, yes, yeah, she does recognize that his past experiences have not been great. So she's recognized that she's got to help navigate through that as well. Mm-hmm. Right. All right. Let's talk Jody and Aaron. And then we will fin- finish off with Deacon Elder. Aaron and and Missionary Diamond. (laughs) All right. Um, So Jody and Aaron, we do find out that Jody was a sex therapist or is a sex therapist. Sexologist? Sexologist, sex therapist. Sex, yeah. Yeah, as a sexologist, I think is how they have it listed at the So she does say that she loves learning and talking about sex, Mm -hmm. right? Now, we'll talk about kind of what happened at breakfast. We'll rope that in with Diamond and Aaron. You're going to rope it in. (laughs) Pun not intended, but take it for what you got. I caught it. <laughs> you did. I was like, oh yeah. All right. But during the the thing, yes, she does so she does talk about she loves learning about sex, she loves mm-hmm. talking about sex, but she also brings up that she was sexually abused at a very young age. age right. Right. Yeah. So that to me, when I heard that, uh-huh. That helped to make some sense Mm -hmm. of some of what we're seeing with her Mm -hmm. because I think, and and this is just my thoughts, Mm -hmm. but I think my opinion, right? Mm -hmm. I'm not, I'm not a psychologist, psychiatrist, none of that, right? Mm -hmm. This is just my opinion Mm -hmm. is that the reason that maybe she is not as what we see Mm -hmm. as engaging with Aaron Mm -hmm. is because with Aaron, there is the potential of it going further, which now requires a different level of trust than homeboy, right? So if there's not a a um, a potential for it to go to another level, then I can be a little freer than someone who it can go to another level who I'm now bringing you in more intimately. And now you have the potential to hurt me in a way that may have been similar to the way I've been hurt before. I think anyone um, who's been abused and misused, mm-hmm. it's all about gaining control. Because mm-hmm. when you lose control or you don't have control over something, then you try, you try to find that control back, right? Because right? Right. it's like when you're abused, someone takes away your power. Yes. And that's in any type of abuse, verbal abuse or anything. 
It's like it pulls away your power. Right. So control is power. Mm -hmm. And so I think you're right on the dot with that, you know. So now how do I gain my control in my relationship? Because I don't want to be hurt because the people who may have loved her the most or she felt that should be protecting her right, that she and watching been. over mm -hmm. her and should be loving her because she's saying as a small child, then now, okay, I'm an adult. I can't allow this to happen right. again. So, yeah, me and Chris can be buddy, buddy, and friend because I know it's not going anywhere. Exactly. And I know I'm not sexually wanting to be involved with exactly. him because that's where my trauma is. Exactly. So now that makes a lot of sense. It makes sense. more sense, yes. And it makes sense of how her d dynamics is with Aaron. Yes. Right? Yes. You know, um, but yet yeah, you could tell that it's a continuous work. It is. You just don't like, oh, I'm going to learn the opposite to you. Because she said that she was didn't want to, um, she felt un uncomfortable about talking about sex. Mm -hmm. Because if you abuse sexually, yeah, you don't want to, you don't want to bring anything that's going right. to trigger that. So then she's thinking, well, I'm going to learn everything about it and maybe make sense of my trauma. Because a lot mm -hmm. of times we're always trying to make sense of our trauma. Right. And so now she feels like, well, at least I have a better control of it. But yet it's still dominating the opposite way in our relationship. And I, because I, I, I can hear some of y'all right now. I'm hearing y'all. Because she also makes the statement that she can be a bit of a man eater, which means, and she said. No, people call her. People, she said, but she says that she can be. Mm -hmm. That where she will sleep with a guy one day and then the next day be done with him. Mm -hmm. Right. I think that that's still, and again, I'm not, I'm not trying to put this as a clinical diagnosis, no. but I think that part of that still stems from what you mentioned as far as the control. Yeah. She can control who gives, who she has access, mm -hmm. who ha gives, has access to mm -hmm. her and who doesn't. And she can cut them off at a moment because again, she's retaining that power. Right. So when they do go through the, the rope thing, um, I think Aaron made the, he, it sounded like he can't, he was like, oh, I'll tie. And she was like, are you asking me or telling me? Yes. Because she makes a statement saying that Aaron knows all about my past. Mm -hmm. So that's confusing to me when Aaron suggests to tie. Because if you're saying you did have this conversation, I would think like, I would be more attuned to ask you, are you okay with what's going right. on currently? Right. How are you feeling about this? Mm -hmm. Because anyone can say, oh, I'm over it. Mm -hmm. It happened when I was a child, blah, blah, blah. But obviously there is something when you still feel like there's some, you know, mm -hmm. something going on. Yeah. So she says they talked about it. And then it just may not have been top of mind for him. I'll, I'll give probably, him the benefit of the doubt that yeah, it may not have been top of yeah, mind. I'm not because he's he, right. No, because he, he's going through this whole thing also where he's like, I'm not sure I make her girly parts tingle. Well, because right, I get he gets tied up. It don't seem like he's feeling anything, right? Right. He just like he just he's just standing there with his eyes closed, and we see her, you know, using the feather. Now, again, it's not as sensual as you see the other couple. Uh, but we don't want to compare other couples. True. But just to see some type of connection between them, I still felt it was just still a little bit off. Yes. Right? Yeah. So he gets untied, right? Mm -hmm. And now he's fully untied. And I, I'm, we're understanding what the instructor is saying. Like, this is about you trusting. This is mm -hmm. not about control. This right. is not about feeling, you know. Mm -hmm. And so afterwards, all the couples feel more connected. And Aaron's like standing there like, is there something else we should be all doing? All by myself. She go, no, we good. I'm hungry, is the response. Yes. And so when you're only engaged and understand and have intelligence on the sex part we lose the understanding of what the intimacy, intimacy is. Intimacy comes first. You can make love intimacy in your head. Anybody can have sex. Anybody can have sex. Well, they do. Animals have sex. Yes. There's but, no intimacy but, but between dogs. True. In a relationship, you need intimacy. Yes. Yeah. Yes, there's times where you just raw, you know, want to have that, uh, you know, those moments. Right. But without intimacy, but you're, you're missing some things. Right. So. Yeah. And so again, so I'm, and the, and those can be the disconnects, mm -hmm. and hopefully maybe from this can help, you know, if 
we don't know if their relationship, you know, made yeah. it or not. Yeah. But hopefully she could see some things there. And Aaron can voice his, uh, voice how you feel like, bro. I'll be like, well, baby, before you this, before you eat, you see everybody looking in each other's eyes. Can I at least look in one of your eyes? Why, why are we not connecting? Right. You know, he has to voice that because I'm going to be honest, when I look at him, I feel like I see a teenage boy. You well, know, and I'm not trying to be thing. I'm no. not trying to be offensive. No, no. I'm not, this you is know, not an attack or anything. I'm not trying to attack Mm-mm. him. Mm-mm. Um, I don't know him. This is my only my opinion. It's like when he talks and when he talks about that, it looks like this defeated young man. But also can she talks to him sometimes like he's a child. Her demeanor and her tone with him sometimes. It's like a teacher upset. Yes. <laughs> so um, just for finishing up with them, she does, Jody does talk with Sandia. Mm-hmm. Um, and she's basically like, you know, me and Aaron don't have to do everything together. She's like, I think the reason that we're getting along so well is because we're not always up under each other. Yeah, yeah it's, it's kind of hard to fight with somebody you're not connecting with. Right. Or, um, or, or, or in the same room with. Right. And I, I feel it unfortunate she thinks it's totally a good thing. Right. I get she's been through something, but she hasn't made it. She gives a sense like, yeah, I've conquered that, but there's things that are still I think lingering. There's still some things there, yeah. Because if you're here because you want to meet them in person and see if there's a connection, you can't connect unless you're in the same room together. Yes. And granted, I don't want you standing at the bathroom door while I'm using the bathroom. Creepy. But we should be spending a nice majority of our time especially if we're trying better. to see if we're going because at the end of the day somebody's got to move to some place somebody else's place if we're really serious if y'all serious right so okay you know and yeah okay let's move on yeah let's move on <laughs> let's all move right on. so let's talk about deacon aaron and missionary uh missionary mother diamond <laughs> so Episode starts, of course. She's waking up. She's still salty. They have breakfast. She's side-eyeing, at least the way the cameras are showing it. Right. Again, just what we're seeing. She's side-eyeing. She's like... Everybody fake. Right. Everybody got fake, fake, fake. So all she's over. like, I'm going to go eat all, eat all by myself. Yep. I'm taking my bowl in the kitchen. So she... I mean, she, in the, Yeah, in the in living the room, room. Family room, whatever. She does, says she doesn't want to be around fake people, including Aaron. Mm-hmm. Um, Aaron comes in, says that it was no need for him to say anything, but she's mad because now her name is in it. So, let me take a breath. So, Aaron comes in Mm -hmm. and he says, hey, I know you're off. I'm checking on you. Mm -hmm. Kudos to him for doing that. You know, I'm checking on you. And she says, like, look, I can't be around um, fake people. Oh, oh, you didn't know? You want to know fake people. And he goes, how? Baby, you had it. You got it. And she's like, no. When I was mentioning all the men, that was your key. And you decided not to come in on your key. And to have my back when Jody was getting loud with me. And so then he's like, oh. I got to I got to offend. I got to offend my my baby's reputation. I'm going to go in there, show her I'm not fake. Now this is this was this is me. This is my opinion. I would say you too late. You late. You too late. Don't go in there and start anything else up. You're too late. What I'm trying to explain to you now, if it ever happens again, I want you to support me. If I'm gonna put myself out there, and I'm I'm putting it in that generalization, I'm making it high level. I get that. I'm making it high level here. Here's here's my other thing though. As a man, okay. I'm not jumping into a fight between two women. You shouldn't. So the fact that Diamond one, she's saying according to her, she's saying that her name is now in it. Mm-hmm. When. If we watch what was presented, again, we don't have every every roll of footage. No. Nope. But what was presented in the previous episode was Diamond. She stepped up. Putting her name in it. 
So the na- reason her name got in it is because she said <coughs> Diamond. Mm-hmm. So if she and Jody are having a fight as a man, I'm not jumping into that. And I think that's what Aaron should have said, but he didn't know how to say that. Mm-hmm. So he got triggered by her saying that he was fake. Right. And the way that she wanted him to respond to show up to show up was to tag team. <laughs> right. You right. know, she a woman. Right. She wanted him to tag team a woman and mm-hmm. argue with this other woman mm-hmm. and double team her. Right. Mm-hmm. Because if you notice, I don't think Aaron jumped into the conversation with Diamond and Jody, if I remember no, correctly. No, no one. See, this This is what Diamond's referring to. Is that no one else jumped in. No one else jumped in, right? Because because someone put it in the comments, and kudos to you. He was like, well, when Diamond went to everybody, every, when Diamond said, I'll, I'll say it. Everybody going to say it with me? And everybody what? They did say it. They agreed. Correct. If Diamond said something, which again... We under, we all understand it's none of Diamond's place nor anybody else's place. That, that also was tells me, place. That also tells me, though, don't depend on people you just met three days ago to have your back. They're not. I'm sorry. The expectation you know, we, for we that built is that too up. high. <laughs> so anyway, so Aaron is now triggered. Mm-hmm. Aaron comes in, stomps in. All right, everybody, I need to have your attention. Attention, attention, attention. <laughs> We're doing a call to worship right now. We're doing a call to worship. I don't like you. And I, I, I yeah. in my head, I started hearing uh, Kendrick Lamar's diss against uh, Drake. I hate your clothes. I hate your shoes. I hate your attitude. He was just hating everything. Um, so he basically he never liked Jody. Mm-hmm. Um, and they get back and forth. Now again, he doesn't. We need to make sure we understand. Aaron mm-hmm. didn't say he. Did he say, he said everyone, right? Or no, did, but he did he, at he one point. Out, he said, he, he, point out, he says, I never liked you. And then he says, then everyone. Mention all the men again. All the men don't, you know, talk about you. He okay. says all the men talk about talk you. Talk about you. Okay. Because I'm like this. Leave Other everyone people? out, right? If you're deciding you're going to be triggered and you're going to now talk to a woman and fight with a woman. This is the thing. Aaron was right. Last night. So what he could have said with Diamond, Diamond, I'm not going to fight with a woman. You took care of it. I'm a man. I'm not going to fight like that. You know, if something, she comes to me or comes at me, then I'm going to have to handle it. But I'm If she not comes gonna, at you physically, I'll step in between, what have you. But but I'm not jumping into not a jumping. fight between two women over over a third dude that that you don't my girl doesn't want and you say you don't want so what are we fighting over right what are we fighting over so i'm like and so then jody has to clap back now this is when jody's aaron does decide to step up because she is a woman and this is a man so it's it's funny how aaron who's he's laid back but he knows to decipher, we're like, whoa, you're a man, you're loud, and you're you're attacking the woman I came for. So Aaron is doing the right way of protecting. Jody's Aaron mm-hmm. is doing the right way to say, hold on. And then he goes, see, she's cutting you off. He said, man, I need you to quiet down because you ain't going to put my focus on Jody. My mm-hmm. focus is on you and how you're talking. Because he asks a brilliant question. He's like, why is this coming up again? Why is this coming up this morning? This was dealt with last night. Oh, you got triggered. Mm-hmm. That's basically what. So, mm-hmm. I mean, even Chris in his note to the producers is like, Aaron, Diamond's Aaron is being a little childish right now. Mm-hmm. Um, so Diamond keeps saying that, you know, Diamond, you know, basically is going off on Jody. Mm-hmm. Jody's like, you've been taking this entire time lying. And Diamond's like, how am I lying? You lying. Jody's like, how am I lying about my life? <laughs> How am I lying about a lie? I was like, oh my God. So again, I was just like, okay, let's just be done with this. Oh, oh, but wait, there's more. Aaron then gets really um, arrogant, in my opinion. 
Oh, yes. We can't forget that part. Where he's like, my 51 years of experience. And he's talking to, to Aaron. Aaron to, to Jody's Aaron. Yes. My 51 years Aaron's of experience. Okay. She's this. She's that. In fact, yeah, gonna... take my number because when when this show is over in a couple weeks, you're going to call me and say that I was right. Yeah, yeah, I ain't going to last a year. I'm like, whoa, whoa, very out of line, mm -hmm. you know. I'm like, are you are you understanding what you're saying? Here's a young man who's trying to find a connection with someone he met online. Mm -hmm. Allow him to discover what his red flags what's, are, what his boundaries are, what he likes, what he doesn't like. And a lot of times we pick people because of our own traumas. So we don't know what happened to him as a child to feel why he feels comfortable with someone who may have their own traumas, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. And so, yeah, you're looking on the outside in just like they don't know because Jody shared it through the camera mm -hmm. that she was abused sexually. Right. We don't know she shared that with the house. Exactly. So you don't know from the outside what's going in because until we got that perspective as the audience... Now we're like, oh, this makes sense. These dots connect. It okay, connects. gotcha. So you're not getting all the dots to connect. So I think he's overstepped in going that far. And you're doing it out of anger. This is not a place of helping Aaron, Jody's Aaron. It's not just out of anger. It is out of auditioning further for, for, for Diamond. Oh, yeah. He's still auditioning yeah. for Diamond. That's true. And so when Diamond said, this is not the way I expected you to act in this role, when he went and did that, he said, okay, I acted the way you wanted me to act in this role. And so now things are good between them, and now they're going to go use the boom boom room again. Yeah, because he, he said he got a little notch on his belt or whatever. Yep. But my thing is against the woman. Yeah. I, I would rather game back if who, you want to. Who wasn't coming for you. Right. That's what I'm saying. She was always coming for you. No. And all of these things, if we're honest, say what you will about Jody, as far as what we're seeing and what has been presented to us. Again, that's all we can go that's off That's all of. we could go off Jody of. Jody has not been the instigator. No, not that we're aware of. That we're seeing. So you're coming for a woman based upon your woman coming for that woman. Okay. Feel great. Yeah. All right. So um, in the, the whole thing, as far as the rope, Diamond ties up Aaron. Mm -hmm. Cool. Mm -hmm. um, Diamond does say that she's not going to bring up the Jody stuff again. Mm -hmm. So let's let's mark that moment in time. Yeah. Let's see if that happens, if that holds true. It seems so far, right? So they far had, this episode it was. Right. They had a great time, right? Mm -hmm. Because, again, they're focusing on their relationship. Yep. And that's what the host said. When she came in that morning, she's like, She did okay, say that, yes. I'm tapping on the kitchen table. <laughs> uh, everybody. Focus on your person. Focus on your relationship. Hint, hint. And, and that's what we've been saying. This oh, whole yeah. thing was like we oh, yeah. for us again. Oh yeah. Yes, we are. We are commentators. We are YouTube personalities, if you will, on this. Right? Yeah. We are commenting based upon what we've seen, but for those that are in there, it's like been like focus on your relationship. Right. Well, and again, it's what you're presenting on camera. Right. We can't take away from what you're presenting on camera. Right. And so, if that's how you're presenting it, that's how it's going to be perceived. All right. So, friends show up. So, his friend Ronald shows up. Yeah. Um, and he's talking with Ronald and says that he's in the mind frame to make Diamond his wife. He plans to propose. Yeah, he feels like this is the right one for him. Friends like, okay. Okay. If, cool. if you're saying that this is the one, right, then he's like, I'm all for it. And they mentioned the... But Aaron does say, you know, I've shopped yeah. around. I've, I've been around. If you've yeah. been around the world, and this is my person. So, okay, yeah. cool. So the sister comes. Diamond's sister comes. Well, oh, go ahead. he does. Aaron, Diamond's Aaron does talk to his friend saying the si there is a sister. And he talks about there was a little beef right. online with the sister. So he does kind of give him a little heads up like, hey. But he also gives he also gives a little tip as far as what he's expecting to happen. Because mm -hmm. he makes the statement she's going to get what she's going to get. Yeah. So 
as far as what, again, just we don't know the timing of it, but mm -hmm. that statement tells me that you're expecting for there smoke. to be an issue, right? Yeah. You're expecting smoke. smoke. Yeah. Um, so the sister comes, mm -hmm. right? Um, and basically what we find out is that there was some post, I guess um, Aaron had said something to Diamond on um, social media, something about I love you, what have you. Mm -hmm. And the sister was like, mm, we'll see. Mm -hmm. And then for some reason that made Aaron that They went upset. back and forth, yep. You know, and I'm like this. That's the sister's feeling. Long as it's not Diamond's feeling, don't don't give into that energy, right? Mm -hmm. Because they, like we learned, that energy just goes back in a circle. Yep. But he gave into the energy, so the comments kept coming. Yep. So the sister's talking with Diamond. It's like he ain't the one. Mm -hmm. All he got is the letters between C and E. Mm -hmm. That's all he's good for. No, yeah. she's asking. She's she, asking. She did him, ask. It's like, is that is, all it is? Is that all it is? Because she's like, hey, I'm concerned. Mm -hmm. And the reason why she says she's concerned, she said, look, this person was with someone else. It's supposedly a very serious relationship. It didn't work out. And then all of a sudden, he's back over here with you. And so she's trying to she's trying to explain to her. She's like. How can someone just easily just leave one relationship where they're supposed to be in love, mm -hmm. and now all of a sudden they're back in love with you? Because, again, the way that Diamond said it on camera. Right. Again, that's all we can go by. The way that Diamond said it on camera is that when the other woman said she wanted to think on it, mm -hmm. that's when Aaron knew that Diamond was the one. Mm -hmm. Now, in my world, mm -hmm. in my view, mm -hmm. that means that you are the rebound. Because if the reason that I'm coming to you is because the person who I asked, who I questioned, who mm -hmm. I was wanting to be with, mm -hmm. tells me I'm not sure, mm -hmm. I want to think on it. And then from there, I come to you. Mm -hmm. That makes you the second choice. Um, I'm, if math, maths. If, math, if, math. if there's another way to look at that, please put it in the comments. Let me know. Math, I'm math. good for that. If what Diamond is saying is the full story, right? If that's what she put. If that's the, again, that's what we saw her say. That's now. Yeah. If I misquote it, I'll be. I'll, I'll take that hit. Right. Right. Put that in the comment. Right. But based upon because we watched it twice. Right. Based upon what I saw and mm -hmm. what I heard, mm -hmm. that's what came across right so the sister's like so how are you going to say this is the one now she's like no he apologized he cried girl he apologized and so the sister got so many different kind of eye rolls that she was working on in that one segment listen she's like girl i don't believe it you know and then she starts saying is it only for the sex is that what you're looking for the sister did come in hot let's she let, she, she, she came, came in, in she came in ready to fight because again another thing is i'm if if my sister was going through that you know i'm going to try to talk to her and say hey this is what i'm seeing right. now do i want to love and support you mm -hmm. yeah because i'm going to be here when he leaves yes. right or if he stays i'm here and so I'm going to I'm going to try to be cool about this, mm -hmm. but I just need you to be open, your eyes to be open. Yes. And don't look for it. Because what I think what she was trying to really tell Dom is like, you have value. And if you're settling, because we don't know if Diamond is or not. We don't know. But it sounds like, in my opinion, what Diamond's sister was saying Girl, I think you might be just settling and you have more value. You want to be she You want to be thought of I could first put, right. instead of second. You want to be the first the number one draft pick. You don't want to be you the one be that you got after your, after all the other people on the board were taken off, right? Right. So, sister comes in. Now, I will say Aaron did not come in hot. No. He with didn't come friend, in cuz he had his boy he with him. Came in with his boy. He introduced his boy to his, Diamond. Right. And the boy was trying to be cool. Like, hey, he's, who not, you? he's like, oh, you're beautiful. Da, da, da. Yeah. All cool. right. Got a drink in my hand. Like, the trying to keep sister's chill. sister's like, yeah. It's then, you know, Diamond's like trying to introduce. And he's like, they're like, oh, we know each other from social media. It was like, we never really met well, through social media. So the sister kind of jumps. And then he jumps with, you dipping where you shouldn't have been dipping. And I think that's where I was. <laughs> this is the thing. If you want to earn points with me, and this is my opinion, 
and saying you're going to be the man in my life and this woman is my sister, she's not going nowhere. You could have made more points with me saying, hey, sis, I don't want to fight with you today. You're only here for a couple hours. My man here a couple hours. We, If, if me and Diamond are going to be together, we're going to have time to work this all out. Right. Because, and listen, let me, let, this is not something us just giving advice. I had to live where I had a family member of hers mm-hmm. that did not care for me. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And I had to navigate mm-hmm. biting my tongue mm-hmm. at times mm-hmm. and letting her be the one mm-hmm. that, that, would fought, advocate. that would advocate for mm-hmm. me. And now that person loves me. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But I had to, because I'm not going to fight her family member. Right. Because again, her family member had been there way before I was there. <laughs> right, and right. And if I don't last, she's going to be there afterwards. Right. And so I'm not going to be the one that fights that right. battle. Right, She's got to be the one that fights that for me. Right. So. Right. And that's what Diamond was trying to do. She was trying to separate them. But you would think. Then it just got ugly. It did. Because when you start calling people out of their name. And you're talking about appearance. And, and hold on. Why are you coming towards my sister? Let me tell you this. You are you are a man. So if I'm dating you, what are you going to do when you come towards my sister? Sandia said this. I'm not going to let anyone disrespect my sister. So you're calling her out her name. Both of y'all going back and forth, which I wouldn't. I'd be like so disgusted with both of my Both of them. Both of them. But then in my head, why are you trying to come up on her? Because are you saying you're going to put hands on my sister? And even after being pulled away, coming back? Coming back? Now. What are you doing? Because, again, I don't know you. Mm -hmm. We only talk on the phone. I don't know how you handle women when I'm not around. How you handle your anger. Right. So that would be a red flag for me personally Mm -hmm. because, again, like Chris says, I don't fight with women. That part. I don't fight with women. I, I know how to respect myself not to fight with a woman because if a, if a man gets in the fight, it starts to go beyond words. So to me, that would be a red flag. I would need you to be the bigger person saying you love me. Now, I will I will say this as much as that went too far. I will again because I, I my goal is to be fair. Oh, sure. Right? So she, the sister, did. it was kind of comical and then it was like, ooh, She's like, your mammy, your pappy. I was like, okay, yeah, we can tell. There's a little countryness there. Right. But then she said, the children. Yeah. Keep children out of out of grown folks' business. Yeah. There's no need to bring his kids no. into the argument. No. They really no need to bring his parents or his parents in. But I get it. You know, we've all been in fights on schoolyards and been like your mama, right? Right. But don't bring kids into it. No. I think it was just, I think they both disrespected yeah. Diamond. And all this. Yes. And they forgot about her. Yes. Because if you're saying, I love her, I love you as a sister, I love you as the woman in my life, we're going to try to work it out and do better. Because at the end of the day, Diamond is a grown woman. Yep. And if she decides that she wants to be with that person, then allow her to be with it. Too just, many- just as we're going to let Sandia figure out if she wants to be with Chris, let's let Diamond figure out what she wants to be. Right. Again, I just, I find, and I said this. It's heartbreaking. I find the hypocrisy of telling the sister, Aaron telling the sister, you dipped into my business when you shouldn't have dipped. But then earlier in the episode and all this, this, well, at least last week, last episode as well, he and Diamond are dipping into another mm-hmm. relationship that they have even less of a vested interest in mm-hmm. than the sister has with Diamond. But Yeah, I mean, that's me. I... I can invest in drama. If someone doesn't care for you, I'm like, look, I'm married to you. I love you. You're going to be a part of my life. You, Everyone else, you're either going to be with me or you're going to be against yep. me. I was like, but I'm trying to be respectful for all parties involved. Yep. You know, because at the end, if <laughs> we got 28 years. My family's been there before I was born. So uh, everybody's going to have to work it out. And if you're not, look, we live in separate places. It's all good, too, mm-hmm. that way. Mm-hmm. But you don't want that resentment there nope. when you're going to be blending families. Yep. But so. it is what it is. That's it for this one. I know it's a little long. Hopefully you watched it on 2X <laughs> if you're at this point because it's sped up a little. 
Um, but let us know if we missed something. Let us know your thoughts. Um, and we will see you all next time. Have a great one. Be blessed. Peace.